All right. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I know this is a little less than 10 minutes, but um, we will resume. I've just turned on the recording. And I'm just, uh, I see that there are questions in the chat. All right, so we answered all the questions till till uh, Galatians 2.16. Okay, next question. Uh, what if we are surrounded by people <clears throat> who forbid eating pork? Because it's mentioned the old covenant. All right, so... How do we deal with the situation? Okay, um, right. So, you know, uh, there are like like I was saying, there are people in different parts of the Christian world who uh, hold on to certain ideas, and they would back it up with like typically scriptures from the Old Testament. Uh, so, in this case. There will be people so you shouldn't eat pork because it's it's said there in the Old Testament. Well, uh, two things. One is, you know, if that's what they feel, that's what they're convinced about, it's good for them, but it doesn't have to apply to me, right? So, but while I am with them, I will be respectful of them, you know. So we're going we'll talk about that a little later. So, so if if they don't want to eat that's good for them, I will eat. But when I'm with them, I will be respectful of them and I won't eat. So, you know, when I'm with them, I'm moving with them, fine, I'll just eat what they eat. But when I'm on my own, like, you know, when I'm back in my own home, you, can, you know, you can eat whatever you want in your home. So you eat, but when you're with them, you just be respectful of them and, you know, uh, they go with it doesn't matter. But you're doing it not because you're submitting to the law. You're doing it more out of honor or respect for them. That's their, that's how they feel. It's okay. You know, while I'm with them, I just uh, honor them. That's it. Yeah. I hope that uh, answers that question. Yes, John. Um, so, Pastor, one more scripture, which uh, I also get many times uh, from uh, fellow believers is uh, Acts 15, verse 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just quickly read that. Therefore, it is my judgment that we do not trouble those who are turning to God from among the Gentiles, but that we write to them as they abstain from things contaminated by idols and from fornication and from what is strangled and from blood. Mm -hmm. So they mention, it is also mentioned in the New Testament. So um, how, <laughs> how do we yeah. uh, interpret that? So this is, um, yeah, so, okay. That, so it says... Uh, things uh, abstain from things polluted by idols. Okay, fine. Paul also writes about that later on. You don't eat things offered to idols, and he gives us reasons, and we will look at that. So, things offered to idols, sexual immorality, okay, that has to do with the life, from things strangled and from blood. So, from things strangled and from blood, but then uh, there are two, two things, two ways we address this, right? So they said this in Acts 15, but what do we read later on? So we go with the, the most recent revelation. So later on, Paul writes, right, in First Timothy chapter 4, he says, whatever is sold in the marketplace, you eat. So First uh, Timothy, yeah, uh, 4, uh, and uh, verse uh, uh, three, uh, verse yeah, verse four, First Timothy four, four, four and five. So, what is the later revelation? So remember, revelation in the Bible is progressive. Right? So, Old Testament was given. Subsequently, revelation came. Acts fifty. They were trying to sort things out with what do you do when Gentiles become believers? That's Acts fifteen, the council in Jerusalem. But it didn't stop there. After the birth of the early church came the epistles, right? So that's progressive revelation. And in the epistles, what does Paul say? First Timothy 4, 4 and 5. He says, whatever is sold in the marketplace. So when you go to the market, we don't know exactly unless they specifically state. Uh, we don't know the whole how they process the animal, you know. 
but you just buy the meat and uh, you eat it. Uh, we don't know whether the person was sacrificing or, you know, the, the, the butcher, uh, you know, maybe he did some, uh, you know, whatever his fate was, he may have prayed to his gods and blessed his shop and blessed his business and blessed all the animals before he slaughtered them. We don't know that, right? Uh, it's, you know, all of that is unknown to us. All we know is we go to the store, we pick up the food, we buy it. So we don't know whether it was strangled, whether it was, you know, what, 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 how it was processed. So basically what Paul writes is first Timothy 4, 3 and 4 is, hey, however it was processed, doesn't matter. You pray and you eat. So that's how we can respond to that. Right, and it's here. It's specifically not talking about hoofed animals. It's just talking about how it was processed, uh, and uh, more so in the context of things offered to idols. So it doesn't say don't eat pork. It just talks about how the animal was processed. Yeah. So, sure, boss. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Let's see the other questions. Uh, Isaac, is it because of the law of the law? liberty that when Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself as the greatest commandment. Yes. Yes, Isaac. So the law, perfect love, liberty places love, walking in the spirit and love, right? So that's why when somebody asks him, you know, in Mark 12, uh, what is the greatest commandment? Mark 12, 29, 30, 31, he said, here are two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. So that's just the commandment of love the perfect law of liberty, okay? So we walk in that. All right, let's take the other question. This is from Divya. So the law is given, so the sinfulness of mankind to be exposed. Why about the Jews trying to insist on circumcision for the Galatian believers? Yeah. So these were the, you know, uh, so we could, uh, so Divya's question was, why did the Jews insist on circumcision for the believers in Galatia. So you see, uh, what was happening uh, at that time, especially in the early church, is a lot of things were changing. You know, so till now, the Jews were following, you know, the law and the prophets. That means they had all the scriptures from Genesis to Genesis to Malachi. They, that was the revealed scriptures, word of God. And they were following that. And now comes Jesus, who introduces the kingdom. And uh, then the church is born. And the gospel initially was preached only to the Jews. So there were Jews who are moving, making this transition from Judaism to embracing the message of Jesus Christ. So that itself was a big change for them. right? For them to realize Jesus Christ is the Messiah and come into faith in Jesus Christ. So this is a big transition. Not everybody is embracing that. So these Jewish people who are moving from Judaism to following Jesus are being persecuted by the, the Judaizers. That means the, the people who are very strong, uh, you know, and Saul was one of them, as we know. Now the church itself is going through transition, meaning not only have Jews become followers of Christ, but now the gospel is being preached to Gentiles. Uh, and Gentiles, that is non-Jewish people, are now coming to faith in Christ. So there is another big transition happening, which is, hey, not only are Jews coming to Christ, but Gentiles are coming to Christ. And traditionally, a Jew would never sit together with a Gentile. You know, that, that fellowship would never happen. But now in Christ, the gospel is we are all made one in Christ. So it's a big transition. So the church itself is struggling with what should we do? Should we tell Gentiles to become like us? That's one question the church itself is struggling. And that's why they had the first council in Jerusalem in Acts 15, which uh, John just read from. So all the elders got together in Jerusalem to decide, what do we do? There are Gentiles who are becoming believers. Should we tell them to follow Judaism the way we used to? Or all do they only just need to believe in Jesus Christ? That was one thing. But then there were uh, the, the, the non-believing Jews 
who were also persecuting the church, right? So there are there, there are these two, you know, or what to say, challenges there. The Jews who have become believers in Jesus are trying to figure out, okay, what do we tell Gentiles who become believers in Jesus? That's because it's, everything is new. The, the revelation of God is ex expanding. The gospel is going forth to the Gentiles. And they're also trying to understand, discern the mind of God. So that's one thing. And then there is the, the traditional Jews who are completely against the Christian faith. So in the middle of all this, you know, uh, there is this confusion um, that resulted from the Jewish people telling the Gentile believers they have to keep the law. So that was the confusion. Yeah. Oh, did, does that, did I explain that? Yes. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Let's see now. Okay. So we've answered all the questions. Okay. Good. Good. Let's move forward. I'm going to go ahead and share the PDF. All right. So in connection with what we just spoke about, the second aspect is we're also free from meaningless rituals, which are part of the law, right? Um, let's read Galatians 4, 6 through 11, please. Somebody could read this for us. Uh, Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. Yeah, go ahead. Galatians chapter 4, 6 to 11. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So again, in the context here, Paul is telling you know these, these believers, look, uh, you, you know, we have become children of God. You know, because God has sent his Holy Spirit into our hearts. We are no longer slaves. We are children of God. We are heirs of God through Christ. So look, it's through Christ. That's what we are talking about. And uh, before that, we, we, you know, we were in bondage to all kinds of things that were not God's. They were not worthy of that. So he says, now, after you're known by God and uh, you know God and known by God, why are you going back to those weak and beggarly elements. So, you know, he's, talk, he's referring to them as weak and beggarly elements. When I mean, these are things that are weak and uh, useless. And you're making yourself bondage to them. And what's he referring to? He's referring to all these rituals. You're observing days and months, and seasons and years, you know. So that, those observances, which they you know, whether Jews or Gentiles, uh, they used to practice. Now, in this context, he's, of course, addressing the things that were uh, under the law, you know, the days and months and seasons and years, all the, the things that they had to observe under the law. He's saying, why are you going back to those things? He refers to them as weak and beggarly elements. And he says, you know, I'm afraid lest I've labored for you. I mean, I've come and preached Jesus to you and I've told you you're free from all these things and you've become children of God and God has given you his spirit and you don't have to behave like slaves and you're actually children of God. You behave like the heirs of God and, you know, you behave like that. But now you're going back and uh, you're putting yourself in bondage to all those weak and beggarly elements, which is, you're, you know, you're trying to practice observance of these rituals these days or these special months or these special seasons. You're trying to follow all that. Right? So 
uh, later on in Philippians, you know, uh, Philippians 3, 3, Paul says, look, we are the circumcision. We worship God in the spirit. So, of course, he was Jewish and then he followed became uh, a believer, but so he refers to his Jewish heritage. We are circumcision, that is, they were circumcised before, but now they're worshiping God in the spirit, not by the, you know, the what they did, uh, by the law, they worship God in the spirit and they're rejoicing in Christ Jesus. And there's no confidence in the flesh. That means what, whatever we used to do in the flesh, all the laws and things, religious rituals and all that, we, we, we're not, we're not, we're not confident in that. We are now worshiping God in the spirit, right? So we do not worship God through the practice of religious rituals. We worship God in the spirit. We don't put any confidence in the flesh in these, you know, these things that we do, right? So that's the second thing, that in Christ Jesus, we are free from observing these days and months and so on. Now, if you want to take a day and keep that as a special day for you to, you know, pray, for you to spend that day in worship of God, or if you want to do it, it's up to you. That's perfectly fine. But you're not doing it, oh, because, uh, you know, everybody else has to told me to do it and I have to do it and only then I will be accepted by God. No. If you want to take a day and pray, you want to take a couple of days and seek God or, uh, just yeah, any time you can do it, and you do it, you worship God in the Spirit. It's not about the days. It's about worshiping God in the Spirit in Jesus Christ. Right? So like I mentioned, you know, there's no need for us to go and practice Judaism in observing certain days. You know, there are seven main feasts. Uh, uh, there are actually more, more than seven feasts that a typical Jew would observe every year. Now, we don't have to go and observe those feasts. We don't have to observe days and months and seasons and years. We don't have to do that because we worship God in the Spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. Another aspect of our being freedom, I'll just try to, try to finish this lesson, uh, is we are free from man-made ideas. That means things that people will try to put off on us. right? So Paul brings us out in Colossians chapter 2, uh, verses 16 to 23. It's a, a little long passage, but let's read it. Somebody could read this for us, please. Colossians 2, 16 to 23. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 to 23. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Shabbats, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as through living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So look at these things, right? Paul is telling, he's writing to the believers at Colossae. He says, you know, don't let anybody judge you or dictate to you, you know, in what you should eat, your food, your drink, or uh, regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath. See, from you, we are free from all this. Because he says, you know, these things are a shadow. They're not the reality. They are the shadow of things. But the reality is Christ. And we are in Christ. So in Christ, we don't have to try to think that we are going to gain anything spiritual or gain anything in the eyes of God because of, you know, what I eat or don't eat or drink or don't drink or uh, keeping festivals or new moons or observing or even the Sabbaths. 
okay, because the Jewish people had different Sabbaths. They had their weekly Sabbath, and they had uh, other kinds of Sabbaths that they used to follow. And he, he, used, he said, all of that, be free from all of those things. Because for us, the substance, the reality is what we have experienced, and that's in Jesus, right? So these two verses make it very clear. Uh, you know, I, we don't have to follow these things. And now, not only that, but he extends the thought to saying, don't let anybody cheat you of your reward. I mean, what is our reward? It is righteousness by faith. It's, uh, you know, we have been justified by simple faith in Christ. So don't let somebody rob you of that reward. And, uh, you know, now he's talking about something else. He's talking about false humility. You know, you're trying to do things that kind of... Uh, uh, make you make a show of humility, like oh, I'm so humble. I'm not whatever. However, that expression would be, you know, in different cultures and different practices, people do different things to just pretend or show I'm so being so humble before God. And he also says worship of angels and intruding things which he has not seen. That means getting into some spiritual things here. Right. So they would say like oh. An angel came and appeared to me and gave me this message, or I had, uh, you know, this spiritual experience or supernatural encounter, so on and so forth. So he says, don't bring yourself under some somebody else's spiritual experience, which they claim to have had, whether an angelic visitation, so on. So here's another thing we need to be careful of, right? Don't Come, uh, don't come into bondage to these kinds of things. So, for example, you know, some person may stand up and say, well, an angel came and told me this, this, and this, or Jesus appeared to me and told me this, this, and this, therefore, I want everybody to do this. Well, you don't have to. Maybe an angel did appear to him. Maybe the Lord did appear to him. But that's good for him. But for us, we have to follow the written word of God. So don't bring yourself in subjection to what somebody else claimed as their spiritual experience. Of course, we can listen to it. We can discern if that is right or wrong, uh, if there is something good in it. And if it's, if it's a genuine experience and there's something good in it, we can pay attention to it. Uh, but we are not subjected to it. I don't have to obey or listen to somebody else's spiritual experience. We live by the written word of God, live by God's word and live by what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Okay. So uh, he says sometimes people could just be puffed up by their own minds. But instead, what should we do? We should hold fast to the head. That means he's saying, you know, you, st you, you just hold on to Jesus. Don't give yourself over to these kinds of things, you just hold on to Jesus. He's the head. And from him, we are all receiving increase that's from God. So, you know, uh, your source of increase, your source of growth comes by holding on to Jesus, doesn't come by all these kinds of practices that he has mentioned, you know, whether it's observing food or drink or festival or uh, uh, you know, uh, false humility or, you know, worship coming under what somebody else's uh, spiritual experience. No, none of those things are going to bring increase. Where are we going to get increase from? When we hold fast to Jesus and we are nourished from what comes from God, that will give increase. So he says, and he's continuing. So in when we died with Christ, we also died from the basic principles of this world. That means, you know, uh, uh, all the things that the world says don't do and don't do, right? Uh, the, the, all these regulations. And, the, and the, you know, we, we would call them uh, superstitions, ideas, you know, don't do this, don't do that, you know. Uh, so so the, these basic principles of the world or regulations, these man-made rituals, man-made ideas, you know, superstitions, you know, she says, look, when we die with Christ, we were separated from all these things. And all these things are just the doctrines of men, the commandments and doctrines. Man, the man says, don't do this. Man says, do this. You know, so don't, you're not subject to that. 
because you know they appear religious it's, it, it, there's you know some form of self imposed religion and false humility uh, neglect of the body uh, but there is no value in getting rid of the things of the flesh right so the essence of what he's saying here in this whole passage is look we are free from all these man made things we just have to hold on to jesus and we receive the increase that comes from god and don't come into bondage or in subjection to all these man made things you know um it is many of these things are repeated elsewhere in, in titus he says you know uh, rebuke the believer sharply so that they can be sound in the faith and don't give heed to jewish fables and commandments of men you know so there again he's telling them don't get into all these jewish fables and stories and commandments of men right so uh this is summary of what i said you know we are free from all these festivals new moon sabbaths don't bring yourself into bondage to somebody else's spiritual encounters don't come under cultural superstitions so what should we do well like we read in galatians 5:1 we must stand fast in the liberty which we have in jesus so don't bring yourself in subjection to these things unnecessary it's just a bondage right whether it's the law uh, whether it's these uh, uh, man made rituals or whether it's the observances of feasts and other things you know don't bring yourself in bondage to that many christians unnecessarily put themselves there oh i'm going to do this from now on from now on every year i'll observe this um you know this particular festival or i'll observe this thing and they put themselves in bondage don't do that be free you can worship god in the spirit you can worship god anytime anywhere if you want to take a few days and make it special between you and god that's up to you uh but don't put yourself in bondage but at the same time in that same epistle to the galatians paul also gives instructions and i just want us to spend a few moments on that let's please read galatians 5 13 and 14 can somebody read that for us please galatians chapter 5 13 and 14 for you brethren have been called to liberty only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh but through love serve one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this you shall love your neighbor as yourself in thank you so now what paul is saying says now he says brother look we have liberty right we've been called to liberty so in jesus we have liberty we're free free from all these things but he says be careful don't use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh that means for your own indulgences to just to satisfy the flesh meaning your own uh, cravings and desires that are not wrong that are wrong don't use your freedom to satisfy your own flesh so the flesh would give rise to you know hatred it would give rise to strife and competition and jealousy and apol lists all these things later on so he says you know don't do those things so we have freedom but this freedom doesn't mean i can just go and do whatever my flesh wants how will i know it's a, it's a work of the flesh see the fruit is it causing strife is it causing hatred is it causing jealousy or whatever all those things you know so we have liberty but our liberty is not to be used to do the things of the flesh instead he says you walk in love so through love serve so what is uh what is a, a guiding principle here we have freedom but our love towards others overrides our the exercise of freedom right so i i i like to say it like this our freedom ends where love begins that means i have freedom of course i can do what i want but my love for the other person for people around me overrides the exercise of my 
freedom, which means I'm willing to restrain the exercise of my freedom in order to love somebody, because of love for somebody. So that's the first guiding truth or principle. We have freedom, but we don't misuse our freedom. We let love overwrite the exercise of freedom. And, and when you walk in love, he says, you know what? You will fulfill the whole of the law. For all the law, the entire law, that is the Ten Commandments and uh, everything Moses gave, the entirety of the law is fulfilled in one word. It says, love your neighbor. Right? So that's the essence of what God wants us to walk in. Right? So uh, uh, similarly, uh, we must you know, obey civic authority. Right? So we all have freedom. But our freedom ends when there is God-appointed authority that we have to listen to. You know, and uh, we, we are familiar with these scriptures here in Romans 13. Uh, you know, could somebody just read this for us? Uh, we will just get a picture. Romans 13, verse 1 to 7. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on who, him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Amen. Mm. Thank you. So we have freedom, but the Bible is telling us, okay, you've got to obey governing authorities. Now, he didn't say, you know, obey governing authorities only if they are good people or bad people. In fact, you know, Romans, you know, Paul is writing to the believers at Rome. And at that time, Rome was governed by these Roman authorities who were totally, what is a heathen, meaning they'd had no concern about God or any of that. They were, uh, you know, we would just say terrible people, but they were the ones who were ruling. And Paul is writing to the believers in Rome and he says, look, you be subject to the authority there, right? So that's it. You know, whoever is uh, is in authority, government, civil authority we're talking about, as believers, we just subject, to them. we submit to them, uh, honoring them as honoring God. And, uh, you know, we do whatever, whatever we're supposed to do as uh, citizens of the country. You know, we pay taxes and we give honor to them, honor is due. Uh, so, so my freedom, the excess of my freedom ends when it comes to, you know, where, where, where uh, uh, the law of the land begins. So I have to submit to the law of the land. Similarly, uh, we, we have to honor all people. So First Peter 2.17, he says, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So here again, he's saying, you know, uh, those days, of course, they had kings and uh, people uh, in those those kinds of uh, authority. And he says, you honor the king and you honor all people. So that means uh, I do have freedom, but the exercise of my freedom is subject to my honoring the people. So I put them ahead of me, right? So of course I'm free, but we honor the same thing in in uh, talking about you know um, 
uh, working or in, in, in employment. So, you know, we, those days they had uh, what referred to as bond servants. Today we will, ref we will talk about employees uh, versus uh, managers or uh, employers. And uh, here again, you know, uh, we, we uh, do whatever, you know, we have to do as uh, employees in wherever we are working in the organizations we are working. Um, and uh, uh, we do it as to the Lord and uh, as uh, knowing that, you know, we will receive our reward from God. So again, we honor our employers or managers, right? So uh, well, what I want to emphasize is that here, I'm just talking about here is that we, we shouldn't misuse our freedom, but our freedom is governed by love. It's governed by honor, like we said. Uh, it's also governed by um, our respect for other people. And uh, just one more thought here on, on the exercise of our freedom is uh, Paul writes about this in Romans 14, 1 through 9. I think it's a nice passage to read it. Read Romans 14, 1 through 9. Can somebody just, um, it's a long passage, but just if you read it, um, if you can read it for us, then I will just try to sum things up. Romans 14, 1 to 9. Romans 14, 1 to 9. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to dispute over doubting things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat, to the Lord he does not eat, and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both <clears throat> the dead and the living. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, you know, in Romans 14, Paul is saying, look, uh, there may be somebody who's weak in the faith. You know, they've just come in new, newly uh, and, and you receive them. But don't get into dispute or debates with them over doubtful things. That means these things don't matter at all. They're doubtful things. They are unimportant things. And what does he talk about? He's really talking about what you're eating. And he's talking about observing days. You know, so he says, look, all, all these things are doubtful things. Don't, don't waste your time. They don't matter at all. Some people eat everything. Some people eat only vegetables. Okay, that's, you know, if you want to eat, you eat. If you don't want to eat, you know, meats and all, that's okay. Uh, some people, for them, every day is the same. And there are others who, you know, they want to observe a certain day and do something special. Okay, it's up to them, right? The basic thing is let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. You make up your mind uh, how you want to, you know, about what you want to eat or not eat or uh, which day is special for you? It's up to you, right? And whatever you do, do it to the Lord. You say, Lord, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this to honor you and so on. But don't judge somebody else, right? So uh, this is in uh, Romans, the 14th chapter. So that we are free, right? What you want to eat, how you want to, you know, worship God or which day you want to worship God, it's up to you. And then in the same uh, uh, Romans 14, 
later on in the same chapter, uh, he then says, look, if something I'm going to eat causes this weaker brother to stumble, then for his sake, I won't eat. That means I have the freedom to eat whatever I want, uh, but I am more concerned about the well-being of my brother, right? If e me eating meat is going to keep that brother away from coming to the Lord, then I'm willing to give up my eating meat in order that he may come to the Lord, right? This is later in Romans 14. So basically what Paul is saying is, uh, for me, the well-being of the other brother, I mean, if such a situation would arise, the well-being of that brother is more important to me exercising my freedom in what I can eat, right? So he's putting that uh, as uh, as an indicator. And the same thing here in First Corinthians 8, uh, in talking about things offered to idols, he says, you know, uh, uh, we, we're not afraid of eating food offered to an idol, right? Uh, it's just food. Food doesn't commend us to God, you know. So just because you eat a food offered to idol uh, doesn't make you better or worse. That's nothing. But he says, I won't eat it. Uh, when I know that it's been offered to an idol, I won't eat it because I don't want somebody else, especially a weak brother. Uh, I'm just summarizing this passage. Uh, I don't want a weak brother to think that I'm worshiping an idol. Right? So... You know, if a food has gone inside a temple and come out and they've done some whatever, you know, uh, thing over that food, uh, f you know, Paul's perspective is, look, it's just food. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, but I'm not going to eat it. Why? Because I don't want somebody else to think that I'm worshipping that idol. I'm not worshipping that idol, right? So he says, uh, so I don't want to offend uh, uh, the other brother, right? So if food makes my brother stumble, I'll never eat meat lest I make my brother stumble. So while we have freedom to eat whatever, uh, we put the well-being of the other person more important than the exercise of our freedom. And lastly, Paul says, you know, though I am in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, he says, though I am free from all men, I make myself a servant to all that I might win people to Christ. So here's another aspect. We, are all, we all have freedom, but there are times when we choose to refrain the exercise of our freedom or even you know, uh, get into situations that make us, uh, uh, what to say, uh, quote unquote, not so free in order to be, be able to win people to Christ. So that's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. He says, though I'm free from all, I make myself a servant to all that I might win the more. Okay. So just to sum up what I wanted to get across here is this. Look, we have freedom in Christ. Uh, we are free. Like we said, I'm just going back to the top of this, these notes here. Just to quickly review. We are free from bondage to the law. We are free from these meaningless rituals that were proposed, that were put forward by the law. We are also free from man-made ideas. We don't have to keep any of those. What we do is we worship God in the spirit. And uh, we need to stand firm in our freedom. But at the same time, we don't misuse our freedom. We let love override our freedom. We let honor towards others. Now we, we honor people, we honor civil authority and so on. We place the well-being of others uh, more important than our freedom. And uh, sometimes we let go of our liberty so that we can touch other people. We can bless other people with the gospel. So we willingly sacrifice our personal freedom for the benefit of somebody else so that they too can be free in Christ. But when we sacrifice our freedom, remember, we are free in our spirits. We are now never in bondage. We're completely free. So that's uh, this lesson, lesson number eight. Uh, uh,
we can take up any questions on this. Yes, Sunny, please go ahead. Um, so I just want to know, I know it says in terms of the Sabbath, that's under the law, but what about on Sundays? Like, I know a lot of people go to church on Sundays and they kind of have it like a, a day of rest. Is that kind of under the law? But I also know that you were saying that you can choose any day that you want, so I'm kind of confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so when we came into the New Testament, uh, we were free from keeping the Sabbath. So what happened is the church, the early church, you'll, you'll find this uh, as the church. Uh, so initially, they, they, you know, the, uh, the Jews were used to keeping Sabbath. But once the church was started, they began to okay, do it on the first day of the week. Now, when exactly they made the shift, we don't know. But we do see it in Paul's writings that uh, he says, you know, on the first day of the week, when you all come together, so they started doing it, uh, and it's also may probably because that was the resurrection day, the day the Lord rose up. So the first day of the week, Sunday, became uh, the day when believers would come together. And uh, and 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 uh, let me just give you this verse here. Um, uh, uh, when they would all gather together for worship and so on. Okay. Um, Second Corinthians chapter. I'm trying to recall this verse here. Um, just can't get it to my mind right now. Uh, Second Corinthians 8. Then he says, When I come, so there be no offerings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Acts twenty seven. Okay, Acts twenty seven. Um, let me just go there. Acts. Yeah, I know he writes about this in Corinthians. I was looking for that passage in Corinthians. Um, Acts twenty seven. Which verse was this? Um, That's the twentieth chapter, seventh verse. Oh, Acts twenty and verse seven. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so Acts 20 and verse 7 is uh, an example where it says, yeah, on the first day of the week, uh, the disciples came together to break bread. Right? So, uh, thank you. So, uh, we see that, you know, at some point, and then also uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 2. Let's go to 16, verse 2. Paul says, on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside. So this practice of, you know, they moved to keeping the Sunday, the first day of the week. So now in different parts of the world, people gather differently. So for instance, even here uh, in, in uh, India, uh, uh, certain congregation like the Nepali church, uh, our, our Nepali church used to meet on Tuesdays. Uh, they used to have the service on Tuesday simply because that was the day many of the people got off from work. Uh, so church happened for them on Tuesdays. In the Middle East, a church happens on Fridays because that's the day they get off from work. So it did, you know, so you know, different parts of the world, you will see that uh, many people meet on Sundays, but some places they meet on Tuesdays. Some people they play meet on Fridays. But the point is that's when you know. Believers have the day off from work, so that's when they gather together for worship. And it doesn't matter, you know, whatever works. The point is for us to come together to worship God. Okay, so what about if you just want to just rest and not do anything? Is that kind of, because that's, weren't they kind of doing that under the, uh, the other law, like Sabbath and not doing anything? Is that kind of like being under the law too? Uh, no, that's a good thing. I mean, that was the whole uh, purpose of the Sabbath, meaning for you to, for us to rest and focus on God, right? So the day of the Sabbath was given so that people could rest and then focus on God. So, you know, whichever day of the week somebody wants to keep it as their Sabbath is fine. And uh, they take that day to rest 
and focus on God and worship God. And you know, if other believers are gathering together, you gather with believers and worship God. So it's fine, whichever day of the week. And you do it to rest. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's take one last uh, time is up already. I had to get mm -hmm. the super asking us to follow that even if we don't believe in honor, should we do it? I think one family is practicing witchcraft, not so sure. They will tell us not to eat anything from there. We go that we cannot refuse food, so to honor our parents and laws, we shouldn't eat or to honor the family. <laughs> we can eat. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the question here is whom do you want to honor? Do you want to honor uh, family members or do you want to honor? Uh, 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 do we honor? Parents, so to honor our parents and laws, uh, from honor the fan, we can eat. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, this is you know. You see, so uh, my my response would be do whatever you're comfortable. Yeah, uh, do whatever you're comfortable. Uh, there is no restriction in in eating the food. Just bless it and eat it, uh, and there is no fear. So don't do anything out of fear. You know, uh, so do whatever you're comfortable. Do it out of faith. Don't do it out of fear. And, uh, you know, whoever you feel you should honor, honor them, uh, walk in love. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we could maybe pick it up again next week. I know we really run out of time, so I'm not, uh, uh, you know, we can take up more questions next week. Okay. So, John, if, if you want to bring this question up again next week, we will do it. Okay, please. Uh, sure, but yeah, thank okay. you. Let's uh, close in prayer. Uh, I don't want to delay the next class. Uh, could somebody just, just say a quick word of prayer and then dismiss us, please? Can I pray? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this uh, wonderful session, Father Lord, to help us understand, Lord, the freedom that you have purchased for us, Father Lord. So you help us, Father, that we do not get entangled in regulations, Father Lord, that people try to impose on our, us, Father Lord, as well as as we uh, learn, Father Lord, let our freedom, Father uh, Lord, uh, help us exercise our freedom uh, in a manner that we consider others as well, Father Lord, that we honor and obey uh, and respect father the authorities uh, father lord the other person higher uh, lord uh, with a high regard father lord i pray that you help us to walk in love and uh, be led by the spirit lord in all these things we pray in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen thank you all right everyone thank you uh, think about this if you have any questions that come up we will definitely take it up next week, okay? God bless you all. Take a quick break, and we'll head to our next classes. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.